Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Call of Duty League action continues. Still a few more games to go for today before, of course, we get to our Championship Sunday. Benson and Chance back in the casting booth for this next game. Uh, Chance, I have a feeling this is going to be a good one. Uh, I'm hoping for a game five. I feel like we've casted a lot of Minnesota Rocker, uh, so I feel like we should be good to kind of predict what's going to be the outcome of this next game. And on the year, we've cast them a ton. Yeah. Dragons. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a fun day, that's for sure. Uh, I want to take a look at our game fuel keys to victory um, for both of our two teams here. Um, and we'll start with Paris Legion. Uh, number one, close out games. We heard from Kismet himself yesterday. And of course, we got to play organized in those final moments, something of which Kismet was very, very vocal about. Feels like there was a couple of mistakes that were coming through here and there, and they need to be more clinical in those clutch situations. Uh, moving on, though, when we look at the keys to victory presented by Game Fuel from Minnesota Rocker, it's an interesting one because this is a team which really looks so, so good. Uh, and we've obviously said, yep, that we consider them to be a big four team. We saw how close their game was uh, yesterday against the Huntsman. Unfortunately, the scoreline may not reflect it. 3-0, of course, but the games themselves very, very close. But for them, it's keep up the decisiveness in search and destroy. Got our X to keep frying and slay out. Of course, I gave him the the nickname Gotar Rex. He was absolutely phenomenal throughout the entire season that we've seen so far, but he needs to keep that standard up if he's going to have any success. But as we move forward, uh, we'll take a look at our quick scope for this series and just compare both of our two teams head to head. And you'll see uh, a little differences here and there. Nothing uh, too crazy that stands out massively. I mean, their S&D KD almost identical. The Hardpoint KD Advantage Minnesota Rocker and the Dom KD again, almost identical, which should tell you one thing. This series should be very, very close. As Chance mentioned earlier, uh, we've casted both of these two teams several times and across the season, we've casted them an absolute ton. As we take a look at our maps and modes presented by the US Air Force, we'll see where we're going in this best of five series. Hopefully, as I said, if you're a neutral out there, you'll want to see this go a, a little further, maybe a game four. Hopefully, if you're a neutral at game five, of course, you're a fan of either team, you want to see it as simple as possible. Keep it a, a three game series, if you will. But as I said, myself and Chance, very, very excited to get this series underway. And uh, I'm expecting it to be a very, very close game as well. But before we get into the game, we're going to have a quick commercial break, see some dragons. But when we return, we'll see some Call of Duty action.
team in. Do we know what the issue was? I see it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Chance, uh, you got over your, your thing with can, dragons. Can, you're can you hear me you're now? back. Welcome. Welcome. Sure. Uh, you actually have some fantastic insight for this series, so I'm uh, I'm pretty excited to to get your to get your thoughts here on what we're about to see. You were mentioning, not that the stream could hear, but I could hear, that we've casted these guys several times, uh, not only this weekend, but throughout the entire season as well. Uh, but Chance, thoughts for this series? How's it going to go? Uh, my thoughts are that I'm just done making jokes. There will be no more humor for me because, like, literally, like, I've made the joke. Hey, I just want more dragons, and then my mic doesn't work, so we got to throw the commercial. And we get more dragons. See more dragons, which is nice. Shouldn't have cracked that joke. I also cracked the joke yesterday, and I was like, man, Rocker up five and zero. Like they're killing it. S and D is easy mm. for them. And then they lost. So I don't want to curse anything. Um, no more humor for me. I'm just going to give the straight and narrow. So, Ben, whatever you want to know, I will Okay, tell you. so in terms of the series, the maps and modes, uh, how's it looking for, uh, you know, an actual prediction? Well, the actual prediction, Minnesota has beat them twice in the two times they faced off. Okay. Of course, Paris looks like a great team, but we haven't seen enough improvements to give me confidence that they'll overtake Minnesota here. So I'm going Minnesota. Okay, fair enough. Of course, there's Paris Legion uh, for any of you guys that don't necessarily know the starting squad for this team. Really look out for Kismet. He's one of the players who really shines every time we watch him play. Of course, uh, Benz has to be a key player, but Zed today has been absolutely fantastic. And of course, this is a knockout game you lose and you are out you win and you stay alive for the minnesota rocker god rx has been leading the charge all day but it's alex as well who often draws a lot of praise chance i was gonna say we've been hyping up well not we we as the collective like casting group as well as the community as a whole has been hyping up god rx for great reason the man is fantastic but i think we're almost to the point where we're starting to overshine how good the rest of his teammates are again the minnesota rocker it's not like they have a superstar that's carrying them on this team they as a whole are a, a very collective unit like the clip they had on saint petrograd or when they're playing against seattle of just the amount of teamwork they had right before the game ended of silly closing doors he's got alex watching over him the teammates flanking around they get all the timing right like they are just a, a very well-oiled machine the rocker has been on point so far the entire year with the teamwork so yes god rx is great but alex is a freak too asim is doing his job assault has been on point in the ar and silly's been a beast as well it's a collective unit and i want to go back to, to what we saw yesterday against uh the huntsman right they lose 3-0 which sounds very convincing but in reality chance the maps themselves were very very close uh, the first hard point was i believe it was like a 15 point game of course the search and destroy goes around 11 but it was 5-0 advantage for minnesota rocker uh, i'm just curious to get your thoughts what went wrong yesterday and what do they need to adjust coming into this game I think, well, it, I'll ignore the search and destroy for just a second. They just got beat. Chicago, obviously, we know is an incredibly so strong team. And in that situation, they just got beat. Like, how many rounds do we have where an envoy in the search and destroy just beat them? Goes Single on a flank, just yeah. makes some sort of fantastic play and, and just beats them. But there's also a couple situations like, what if envoy doesn't miss that jump like up top and then like fall into the doorway and then pick up a three piece? Like, if he sure. hits that jump, that doesn't happen and then he dies and then the rocker win a lot sooner. And then maybe the conversation we're having now is different. Like they were right there knocking on the devil's door against arguably the best team in the world. Certainly top two without question. It just establishes they're a very strong. And then, team. of course, on the flip side for Paris Legion, uh, we've seen so many small mistakes come into games, but yet they still take games unbelievably close chance. It doesn't necessarily matter uh, with, with how close these games are. You still see those mistakes. But as I mentioned, they are uh, winning 
perhaps that maybe they shouldn't be. But either way, we're excited for the game to get underway. We're going to quick commercial break. When we return, though, we'll have game one of the series. Dragons.
Coming into the CDL, no one really had Paris Legion as a good team. You didn't think they were gonna win a series. Quickly did we learn, we were very, very wrong. Paris Legion are the biggest surprise of the CDL so far. You have the bottom of the power ranking. Boy, oh boy, are you wrong. They're not the best players in the world, so they need to outsmart, they need to outplay. They all bring something to the table that works really nicely together. There's no egos. These guys aren't champions, they haven't won everything, there's no rings on their fingers. These guys are hungry, they're passionate, and they have the right players around them. It's about buying time now for your teammates, but Denz only needs the pistol! Denz is coming through so hot for this Paris Legion team. He's just been so, so crucial. He is that kind of consistent, slaying power that they need. Just yet, he has all the audio cues. Kismet now with three. I will always say, whatever team Kismet is on, for the most part, he'll be your X Factor. He's very well prepared. He manages to understand the weaknesses and the strengths that people set up. Paris Legion right now is super tough to call. It's a wild card team that you know can upset the big teams. I see them mid pack, but with huge potential. They have got some tough opponents coming up. These guys are going to struggle, they're going to be tested. And I think with that test, they may improve themselves. Everyone has to really give them the respect they deserve. They're a team who is hungry to prove people wrong. The kill feed is all orange. They're sending a message. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're just waiting for the game to get underway. Our players just going through a few final server testing, making sure they'll have the best possible ping and fairest possible game we could ask for here, Chance, because again, this is a knockout game. Lose and you're out. And there's a lot of money on the line and a lot of CD. Well, not a lot of CDL points, but 10, ten. which doesn't sound like a lot. But technically it is because quite a few of these teams need all the points they can get. Obviously, the Rocker in a pretty good spot right now, but they need to make sure that they keep that consistent pace. And obviously, Paris in a, well, like a relatively okay spot, right? Yeah. Right at the middle of the pack. The more points they get, obviously, the better. Yes, absolutely. Excited for the game to uh, get underway, of course. And we talked a, a little bit about, you know, predictions for this one uh, and what we're expecting. But I think overall, Chance, this should be a very close game. Absolutely. I, I mean, again, these two teams have played before. I think the hard point is a straight split two to two, like uh, either team is one, two from the different series. It's the domination that has really been on point for the Rocker. They've played on two different maps for domination, and the only map they haven't played is the one we're playing for this series. So they're just throwing everything at the wall, figuring out what they can do against each other. But in my mind, that is the, the key to the series, right? Yep. If obviously Paris wants to get off to a hot start, that map one is still important, but the domination in my mind will decide the series. I know we talked a lot about Minnesota Rocker and some of their players individually. We obviously highlighted Alex. We talk about God RX as we so often do. Uh, but on the other side, Paris Legion Chance, who, who's impressed you the most over the past few days? Oh, well, over the past few days is a little bit different. I, I mean, of course, the entire time, I'd say Denz sure. has probably been the most impressive player since yesterday. I don't know. I, I think like Luca has put up some pretty good stats so far, but he's also had a couple games where he's just been inconsistent, right? Like he dropped 11 kills, I think, over the course of the entire domination. We watched him play yeah. earlier. So he's had a couple kind of maps where he's been slacking off. And I think that's kind of true for a few players on the team, right? Luke has been a little bit inconsistent. Kismet has been a little bit inconsistent. Zed's been doing his thing, which I can appreciate, even if his stats don't look incredible. But in my mind, that's just kind of like the Paris story. Like, they're a very good team, but they can't get to that great level just because of some inconsistencies. Right. You mentioned Zed there. We've obviously saw him make some uh, map-winning plays. That's for sure. His uh, just clutch factor seems to be increasing every single time we, we watch them play. Uh, but again, I'm expecting this to be a very, very close series. This one is the type of series you look at, I think, and you may see a game five on the horizon. It sounds cliche to say, but just with how close these two teams really are. I mean, yes, you can make the argument sort of rocker, of course, a, a, a top tier team, of course, maybe your S category. But Paris Legion, they're knocking on the door, Chance. They're knocking on the door. I mean, sure. Like, obviously, the expectation for this series, I said it a moment ago, is for the Rocker to win, but not by a massive margin. Like, if you were to give, like, the Vegas betting odds or whatever, it's going to be like a 65-35 in favor of the Rocker. Like, they have to play at their best sure. to take the Legion down because 
it, it's been almost the same story for Legion of any team that's above them in the rankings. They've been losing to any team that's beneath them. They've been beating on a pretty consistent margin. But if they've been making those slow improvements, it's just Rocker. It is that small level above them that once they hit that final form, that's when they start taking the top. And I'm curious down. to hear your kind of thoughts on this because uh, we haven't really, haven't really mentioned it. Obviously, since Kismet said, yeah, we're making a lot of those small mistakes. Is there anything that you have seen that you think needs to be improved from Paris Legion to really start turning these close games around to, to actually make it so they are closing out games? It's weird. I Like, from what I've seen, I'm not too sure because it seems like it's a communication thing a lot of the right. times. That would be my guess, but obviously we're not hardwired into their comms consistently, so I'm not too sure. But there's a lot of moments where there's something left open on the map or sometimes, like, let's say St. Petrograd S&D, we watch them play, for mm -hmm. example. We know that Shox is going to get flanked because we see the smokes coming in from Chicago that block off a line of sight. He never gets the call out for his teammates, and then he just gets shot in the back and is dead for free. So I think that's a communication thing. But maybe someone told him, and he just didn't listen. I, I mean, maybe that falls under the branch of like communication <laughs> anyway. But we had a moment like that, or the moment where I think it was formal uh, to break the P2 spawns on Gunner or Hardpoint. He just flanks all the way around, right. but then should have been watching that. And either he needs to call out to his teammates, hey, pick this up. This is the only thing I can't grab. Or he needs to know that he's that guy. So my guess is that the communication is not quite on point but obviously we can't hear them so i'm not 100 percent sure oh well, some fascinating is i'd love to uh, potentially go to an astro gaming listening at some point with paris legion but whilst we wait uh, for map number one to get underway i want to throw it now to our scuff gaming team of the week this is your scuff team of the week a super team built with five of the top performers at the most recent event this week, we're picking five players from the Los Angeles Home Series event. First up, it's Slasher. Optic Gaming may have had a rough start to their season, but they finally scored their first wins of the year at their home event. Slasher, back on his trademark AR, was a slaying machine, scoring the highest domination KD of the event and the third highest overall KD. It's very rare you're gonna see a round of played with such perfection. One way to get on the scuff team of the week is to set slaying records like Octane. Going into the Los Angeles event, the highest kill count in hardpoint was set by the Florida Mutineer Skies at 43 and 30. In Seattle Surge's match versus the Los Angeles Gorillas, Octane tied the kill record at 43, but died 14 less times, finishing the map with a staggering 43 and 16 scoreline, the best hardpoint performance we've seen this season so far. This is the, this is one of those performances. Hey, keeps oh going. My goodness. Next, it's Alex of the Minnesota Rockers. Alex brought some major heat to Los Angeles, playing a crucial role in Rocker's incredible run. It's not very often a submachine gun player makes it into the top KD rankings due to the nature of this role. However, Alex put on an absolute SMG clinic in Los Angeles, scoring countless two and three pieces all weekend. About the rotation. Alex is like a walking double kill at this point. Also repping Rocker, it's God RX. God RX is quickly cementing himself as one of the best flex players in Modern Warfare. Whether he's posted up with an AR, flying in with an SMG, or scoring cross map picks with a sniper rifle, God RX is proving to be a killer with every loadout he's running. Finally, it's the one and only Clayster. The two-time world champ helped lead Dallas Empire to their first ever CDL tournament win at the LA Home Series. He may not have had the flashiest stats, but Clayster's solid AR presence and clutch multi-kills created much needed space for the Empire's aggressive SMG players to run around and slay. We have ourselves a new champ. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Dallas Empire, the victors of your Los Angeles Home Series event. That's your Call of Duty League Los Angeles Home Series Scuff Team of the Week. Paris Legion versus Minnesota Rocker coming up. Of course, both these two teams have fallen to the Chicago Huntsman already this weekend. I'm sure both would love a bit of redemption, if at all possible. Uh, of course, this a knockout game. Lose and you are out. Game number one about to get underway. We're going to Azir Cave. That's our map number one chance. And I know you've talked a little bit about the entire map layout already, but specifically just game one chance. How do you see this one going? Well, it, it is interesting because this is a map that both of these teams love to play on. Like we've, I've used the like the little tagline of saying Luca is much more comfortable with an M4. Yeah. Give him a map where he can run it. Azir Cave is one of those, and Paris is four and one on that map. 
But it's a similar story. God RX also loves to run the M4 and loves to play slow and bait if he can because he does incredible things in the same regard. So it's a map they love to play, and they're 5-2 and two Okay. On so it's a map both teams like. It's a map where both teams get to have their guys in their kind of comfort weapon picks. Not that God RX isn't comfortable with the MP5 as well, but <laughs> it's just a, a nice head-to-head. -head. This is actually a map in both the series these two teams have played. They've just gone 1-1. One to -one. Okay. So... It's uh, about as close as you can get, at least in terms of... I expect a very, very close game number one. We kick things off on board with Alex. Unfortunately for him, that's going to be short-lived as Luca finds himself a double. Already Minnesota Rocker, though, uh, to build himself some points here on the first hill. I've never been happier to realize that you were passing the game because I didn't have it pulled up on the monitor. <laughs> so you said that. Didn't realize gameplay was going on. I need to make sure I unmute that. So I'm nice and prep, but right you are, Ben. Nice hot start coming in from Minnesota. Oh, baby, do they look oh, yeah. good because I'm clearly watching. Gameplay definitely, uh, definitely does help when trying to pass, that's for sure. Uh, Minnesota Rocker, though, a 30-point lead-ish starting to develop. And again, keep your eyes on the minimap bottom left. You'll hear us captures referred to it a lot. It's just so, so crucial. And if you're a new viewer, I recommend you keep your eyes on it as much as possible. You'll learn so much about the way maps are played and specific game modes as well. For now, it's the Orange Arrows of Paris Legion that have the favorable spawns for our second hill. And they're going to get a ton of time here, Chance, because the first hill didn't go well at all. Not at all. 48 points on P1 is a pretty massive margin, but Paris obviously a little bit passive to make sure they don't lose spawns, but they actually make a good point. Like, if you're genuinely trying to improve your gameplay, try to pick a player that kind of, like, matches your play style, right? Obviously, if you're, like, a slow M4, look at Assault on the minimap, mm -hmm. see what he does at all times, and try to figure out why. If you just practice hell because you're only 18 years old or maybe you're 16, something like that, <laughs> pick a seam. See what a seam does on the map and just track him around, and anytime someone makes a sneaky play, rewind it because we're on YouTube. Go back a couple seconds, see what kind of routes they take, man. There's a lot of ways we can learn It, it helps as well with your rotations, of course. You just follow those minimaps and, or those arrows on the minimap, I should say, and it'll maybe aid some of your gameplay at home. But... For now, at least, Minnesota Rock are not needing much help here. And they break through P2. Now their rotation fight's going down. Unfortunately for a team, he will fall. It shocks that shuts him down. But Minnesota Rocker, a nice 50-point lead as we go into our third hill. Quite a bit of pressure, though, coming out from Paris as well right now. Of course, number seven, Kismet, once he falls, it does open up the map. Now you got players from the Rocker able to start pushing up through blue and shocks. Well, he feels that pressure. He's getting tagged up by a couple nades, and before he can shoot a bullet, he gets taken down and dropped. And, well, Rocker, now the push is in. Kismet, though, trying to be that cutoff man, and maybe his job isn't even necessary as his teammates go and pick up all the kills. <laughs> you see him try and push over towards bridge waiting for any Minnesota Rocket players to come his way. Unfortunately, uh, they do. Alex will find one. Paris Legion, though, still trying to get as much hill time as they possibly can. 25 seconds left on the hill. Hill advantage Minnesota Rocker for now, but you can see how cautious they're going to be here. They don't want to push too far past the hill. And of course, if they do that, they would have spawned out for our new hard point. Zed just come across Silly <laughs> screen right there. He's not prepared for that at all. Silly just maybe a little bit too slow for his own good. But either way, Minnesota on the rotation to seem doing MP5 things that normally an M4 is going to be able to do. But maybe that's why he gets dropped. Either way, got a Rex in the power position. This is the AR battles that you need to win. Whoever comes out on top just buys their team so much clearance. And, well, he's at least keeping Kismet at bay. So looking to try and clean up. Maybe multiple players. There's one. There's two. Nicely done. Can he find number three? It's going to be Luca Assault. A human turret just sitting, ready and waiting for Paris Legion to push. And Minnesota Rocket, once again, will try and reclaim the hill, but Assault's going to need a little bit of help and not going to clean up that kill on Kismet. Kismet actually gets himself a double, and Paris Legion fights him from the front. Fighting from the front, of course, you have to watch the rotation battle as well. You see on the right side of your mini map, this is straight one on one between, who is it, Asim? And whatever player it is on the other side, Asim's able to pick up that one. He's able to find a couple more. But, of course, while he's attempting to do this, the remainder of the Paris Legion actually able to break through and get all the scrap time. So Paris is getting the actual points while Minnesota is just attempting to rotate. Our last hill now of our first rotation. Shocks himself uh, top sandbag, sneaky little corner, waiting for Assault to push through. So the early time will go in favor of Paris Legion. They'll take the lead as well as the kill feed all orange Minnesota Rocker struggling to break through early. 
for the moment. These are fantastic signs for Paris. Again, if Luca is having success, that means his teammates are going to be very, very happy. And of course, Denz can follow him up as well. He's able to pick up three in the feed and gets the trophy down to help his teammates out even a little bit. More. Smokes out. Denz can't see much, but he's going to spot at least one. There's the scene number two inside the hill. Finds that as well. Denz starting to heat up a little bit towards the end of this first rotation. Plenty of time left on this hill but what you'll see of course is that constant fight for this spawn knowing that the second hill in our new rotation will be right back here as well and just to follow up on an earlier conversation and don't just watch players on the mini map to learn about their gameplay also watch where they throw the utility right look at how that smoke is coming to effect that even though dens gets blocked off his or excuse me even though dens picked up five kills you block off his line of sight just for a few moments and those five kills are eventually null and void and the rocker is still a bit of breakthrough so smoke placement is absolutely key Most definitely is this is now our second rotation underway minnesota rocket looking to take the lead once again you talk about smoke there's one right on top of alex but he is not determined Heard at all pushes straight through shuts down zed teammates are gonna have to try and find some trades but shots shutting down any trade potential with a double of his own nicely done from dens as well assault will fall and we can see ourselves another lead change dens of course his responsibility was to well watch the push to make sure no one sneaks through a scene does exactly that a scene already trying to block the spawns but again paris while you have players on the rocker trying to get spawns for new they're just trying to get the actual hill time but it looks like those final 10 seconds going away the rocker we will have ourselves another lead change quick glance at the stats and you can see assault 21 and 16 got our x 20 and 14 both of those players having a field day for Minnesota Rocker on the flip side, Kismet leading the way for Paris, 20 and 22. Luca, 18 and 13, not too far behind. Then she predicted this to be incredibly close. Statistically, this is an incredibly close game. And so far, it is not disappointing as Alex hits the flank. There's three, could have found four, but Silly gets a double of his own. And Minnesota Rocker lock down control of P2. This really the first big amount of control we've seen all game. This is the most massive lead, as you rightly pointed out, and all of this comes because Asim is able to break through the setup. He just finds the hole, ran right next to Dent, and he is going to buy his team essentially that full 60. So again, these small little things sometimes repairs. They do a lot of things right, and then that one mistake can cost them. But at the same time, we saw this from map number one earlier in the Chicago Paris series where they make one small mistake, find themselves down by 60 or 70 points, and they have fought back before. Yeah, and that was going to say, that's what makes this series so exciting to me is we have two teams, both incredibly resilient. Both can go down 50, 60 points and fight back. It's never over until the fat lady sings. Kismet now looking to try and find as many Minnesota Rocket players as he could. Unfortunately, only finds the one in Assault. And it's bad news here for Paris Legion because Minnesota, they're in the new hill. In the new hill and slaying out like crazy. Alex has gotten beats before. Shox is able to win that gunfight there, but obviously God Rx is going to be there for the trades, and this is a difficult man to get past. He caught out a couple players from Minnesota, bumping the numbers up. He's got 23 for the moment with a minute in the hill to boot. Yeah, good, good hill time all around, really, for Minnesota Rocker. A couple players already over a minute. Silly, just a second shy. As now, Paris Legion do break through, but it's scrap time for them 15 seconds all about trying to force these spawns and unfortunately they're not gonna have the spawn control yet they're gonna have to rely on just pushing and flooding straight into the new hill when it pops and we did see on this hill last time around that minnesota got there first but they never quite got the setup and the pressure that they wanted inside the hill this time they've had what 15 20 seconds with effectively their entire team here they get this setup that they want everybody's in position with the right gun that they need now they need a good and paris hole. need to break quickly because Yes, you can maybe contest, and Minnesota Rocker might not be able to win on this hill, which mathematically at least they can do here, but you don't want to give them too big of a lead. As, again, the push coming through, but Assault back in his human turret ways. He'll find one, got our X with two. Luca responds with a double for Paris Legion. Make that a triple, and Paris have broken in, but now the rotation race has to come through for Paris. You've got to be proactive here. You've got to be quick, because right now they are down over 80 points. It's not looking good. And only getting 30 seconds with the full setup like that isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. But if they do the exact same thing once again, well, then simply the game will be there. So Minnesota have had all the time to get that map pressure, to go and set up exactly where they want. They don't have to worry about the rock wall push just yet. They have players inside the hill. And even with the God Rx's positioning, all those players from Paris have to get past him. And it is just going to take them so much time, especially with hit fire like that. What was that?
Scholar X with three, Silly with two. He may find three of his own. Almost the pistol switch to complete the three feasts. But you see the pressure. Minnesota Rocker are putting on Paris Legion. Paris spawning so far out. Assault, he's just chilling in the hill. Not much for him to do right now. Racking up the hill time. As maybe one fight may need to be won. Can Paris even get there? No, they can't. Minnesota Rocker take game one. Our first rotation chance was incredibly close. A nail biter and the Minnesota Rocker blow Paris Legion out. It finishes a hundred point lead. And something that's incredibly interesting is through all the call of duties, all like the best plays, like the play of the game is what have you. Normally it's some guy going off in the past couple of years. It's been a specialist or whatever, making the big play. You can make a montage this year of the plays that win you the game is the guy that just sneaks through the setup, doesn't have to kill a thing, yeah. and then just block spawns because it was a neck-and-neck -neck game. The lead is changing back and forth five, six, seven times, however many, and then we have that moment where a seam just gets past ends, just gets right past them, blocks those spawns, and that's the hill that the Rocker locked down a full 60. The Paris Legion never recovered from I that I know we've, we talked about this uh, off-air in the past, uh, the beginning of the season, but it's very Blitz-like from Call of Duty Ghosts where uh, you can just make a play without actually having to do too much. And I know plays Rambo Ray would be very, very proud of, uh, but in terms of game number one, it is Minnesota Rocker that take it. Got our X with uh, some big, big numbers. 34 kills, 21 deaths, over a minute hill time for him. Uh, on the other side, Shocks with a slow game, 15 and 24. Uh, Zed as well, 18 and 29. Both of those guys need to step up. And there's so many maps, it seems, where the Rocker are just happy to have, like, an extra AR. Like, generally speaking, in this game, it's a four-sub, one AR meta. And then you go to a map like Hackney Yard Hardpoint, where you're expecting, hey, at least four subs, maybe even five, because of how small and fast-paced it is. The Rocker say, nope, we'll take two. Then you go to a map like Azir Cave. A lot of the teams will bump their numbers up to two ARs. And Silly's like, you know what? I'll have number three. So they're just a, a slightly different team, but again, a well-oiled machine. We'll take a look now at our Scuff Gaming play of the game. Uh, Salt went on a rampage several times uh, throughout that game. Of course, there were other uh, significant plays, which really went on to give Minnesota Rocker a big, big, sizable lead. But when it comes down to just killing and slaying, Salt was, uh, was on a rampage at one point in their chance. And this is what I'm saying. Obviously, it's a map. You get your ARs posted up. They're going to be in a great spot to get all the kills. So Assault will take full advantage. But it really is a situation where, like, yeah, it's the play of the game, but it's not always the one that makes the biggest <laughs> impact, right? Again, the blitz throwback is a pretty good indicator. Maybe we'll have, like, a, a hide-and-seek world champion towards the end. I think right now, Envoy way up high on that leaderboard. The man's invisible at times, but Asim, Again, putting in work just Obviously, I mentioned, you know, Rambo Ray being very, very proud. It, it does feel very funny to me that this is a game I could always uh, imagine him being very, very good at. But it's great to obviously have him uh, back in the Call of Duty esports scene more, in a more direct role. Obviously, coaching uh, one of the smartest players, a, a godfather, if you will, or a codfather, uh, to be more precise. He's obviously taught so many of the players that you uh, love and, uh, and know in the Call of Duty community on so many different teams. He was one of the original players to to really teach and preach the correct way of playing uh, Call of Duty. But game number two, about to get underway. We move on to Search and Destroy, where Minnesota Rocker yesterday, I hate to bring it up once again, but they had a 5-0 lead against Chicago, and they let it slip, giving them six rounds in a row. Love to see them uh, come out strong here in game two. But on the flip side, Paris Legion, pretty good at Search as well. Absolutely. And you look at a map like this for the Rocker, and I almost don't believe the stat line I'm staring at right now, but one in four on Gunrunner Search and Destroy. And they find themselves here again, and Alex knows that Silly does too. The best start you could possibly have, but their struggles on this map have been real. Maybe, Ben, they've made some adjustments. Uh, potentially, as uh, Luca left scrambling away. A 1v5. Wouldn't hold your breath, Dream. Don't think this is going to happen. It's not. God, our Rex. believe it was him that found that final kill, and... I mean, you mentioned a good start. That was a fantastic start, really, wasn't it? Everyone stays alive for Minnesota Rocket. Everyone falls for Paris Legion. And just for what it's worth, no, I don't think they made any adjustments right there. That was all, like, very standard yeah. stuff. It's just Alex went to his spot, gunned two people, and then everyone just kind of won their one-on-one -on -one silly from the back. So they didn't do anything crazy. It was just a very good round that all happened to go their way. But nonetheless, they've struggled on this map. That's a very good Alex start. will do that every now and then. He'll just win a every now and fights. <laughs> Makes it look very, very simple. Paris, of course, now for them. Only attack here in round number two. And 
We ran into Alex once again. He was able to find one flurry of trades. Makes it a 3v3. And for Paris, uh, A push may have been slowed down. Now rotating over to B. And this read actually isn't perfect at all. It might have been working out, but I think Silly is just now figured out. I was going to say, Minnesota Rocker put the pressure back on B immediately, but they weren't ready for Paris to be there to meet them. Now he's got our X in a 1v2. The timing works out That's... perfect. And he's able to take one down. The player shoots the oh instant my. challenge. And you know, you know, Ben, that he wins those. Fantastic. Fantastic play from God RX. He sees the first cross from Rock. Obviously, Lucas shoots. If you're going to shoot at God RX, you got to hit him. Because if you don't, you reveal your position in the one on one. He'll take full advantage of that. A great clutch in round two. And that is uh, an ego challenge. Actually, I don't even know if that really counts as an ego challenge because he wasn't it's one shot confident. at all. But either way, that's a very confident right. play. He's like, oh, that's where he is. Let me go right back and take this gunfight as quick as I possibly can. Don't need to reposition. Don't need to play around the bomb. I'm just going to go. Yeah. That's a 4 no start for God RX as well. And he can continue on at that pace as Minnesota Rocker go back onto the attacking side. Alex pushing through the B site. As is a seam, and well, a seam finds Kismet. Nice first blood from him. Advantage Minnesota Rocker. <clears throat> Haven't picked up the bomb. That's help, Jens. So search and destroy is a game mode where on offense you take the bomb and you have the option to plant it at one of two I, sites or kill the entire opposition. Chance I'm the rockers sometimes forget this. Pretty know. sure Paris know about it too. They do. Denz has seen the bomb, so he's caught that out, and Paris can just play around the fact that no one picked up the bomb. Got her X found his bird death. Denz though does get immediately traded out, and it looks like the AR battles somehow. Despite the information game not going their way, the Rocker win enough gunfights. And now you got to see him. He's been sitting on this B site the entire time. He knows it's clear. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Time for Zed. Alex may find two almost. Bomb finally going down. You're absolutely right. Asim sat on the B site the entire time those fights were going on. Luca now left for a one on two. Got to hunt down Silly and Asim. And unfortunately for him, Asim will find him first. Minnesota Rocker on cruise control in these early rounds of search and destroy but chance we've uh, we've said that before this weekend haven't we we've said it quite a few times that's a very good point the game is not over until it's over and i will not make any jokes about it there will be no humor <laughs> from me but i will say Brian Sane and, and Reppin, their strats are just insane at this point. Next level stuff. Hey, guys, let's leave the bomb oh, and spawn. Brilliant. To bait pairs Legion to this side of the map. That way they're all here. Let us seem clear out yep. B, hang out, and then we'll just have to make sure we win the gunfights, which are not easy at all. But pull that off and then win the round, just like they wrote. I mean, we're, we're talking like 200, 300 IQ stuff right there. And the backroom staff in Minnesota Rocker <laughs> works out, of course. Uh, but a first blood does come in here for Paris Legion. It's Luca that shuts down God RX, who did have a sniper out. And we see a follow up here for Paris Legion and then find their first round here in the search and destroy. And that bait is just absolutely perfect to see him again. We've seen people play in that little cubby kind of corner inside the crate so many times. You know they slide off the check bomb. Dens, as patient as could possibly be. And this is the Paris Legion picking them apart one by one. Fortunately for Luca, he will fall. No double kill for him. Bomb has been planted, though. But for Silly and Alex, you're really looking at a miracle. Two versus four. Time is ticking. Kismet spots the first cross. Zed should be there to instantly trade. There's one, there's two. Weird chance when Paris Legion win rounds of search and destroy. They're very, very convincing. Very clinical as well. And again, you saw the setup coming in from Denz. You saw the first blood coming in. I'm pretty sure whichever player took down God or X was basically just sat and spawn uh, on the little hop up right next to where you spawn in. But now that Minnesota Rocker are back on the attack, I have to wonder, are they going to take the bomb at the start? You know, of the it's round? a great question, Chance. It, it, it really is, and you know, traditional strats would say yes, but <laughs> they, hey, they, they decide to go for it. Asim doesn't forget this time. I, I, I'd love to have heard the comms in that moment a few rounds ago. Asim goes, all right, I'm planting. Uh, <laughs> guys, uh, my bad. I'll, I'll cover bomb, I guess. Uh, if you guys can bring it over towards me. Doesn't forget this round, though, and as you can see, Asim, once again, trying to work over towards the B site. Completely flipping the pace, though, this round is the Minnesota Rocker. They are just waiting for the flank to come in or for someone to cut through mid-map. And maybe they will eventually slowly start to creep up on this B site, which, to their credit, it's wide open. Oh, it's, yep. Yeah. It's definitely wide open, Chance. And a team may just say, uh, 
Let me try and get this bomb down. Silly. We'll have one mid-map. Shocks finds the kill instead. First blood for Paris Legion, but Minnesota Rocket get the bomb down and Zed is sprung into life. Zed Talon's popped. He's going to flank and, well, all the kills going in favor of Paris Legion. And it looks like the next two will start falling in short order. He's making on, a Mark. sneaky play. He's able to find one. He's able to trade out the second, but no. When I say trade out, I mean Kismet is going to body him and get the defuse as well. Blink and you miss it. Kismet, his ability to get off bomb and move 15 feet in the blink of an eye. Unparalleled, Ben. This man just put him on skates. Dropped the bomb, slid, and somehow found the kill. There it is. <laughs> I guess the second as well. I mean, Zed would have more than likely found that kill either way, but it looks good for Kismet when he gets that two-piece and, of course, the defuse. Paris Legion, when their second round, starting to make a comeback here in game two. And Ben, when you are right, oh my god, you are right. Got it out. When Paris Legion win that round yeah. to search and destroy, it is just destructive. If they start figuring out how to clutch some of these 2v3s, 3v4s, it, it really is just the difference. Uh, you know, when they're winning rounds, like I said, it's very dominant, but it's these 2v2s, even 3v2s, you see them throw them away. And you have to think if they can find that consistency, they can find just better form and search and just in general, and it might become a force to be reckoned with in the Call of Duty League. This round, first blood again for Paris Legion. It's Alex that falls early. Zed will find another. Now 5v3. Next victim falls as well again. Paris Legion, as soon as they get that first blood, they just start letting the dollars fall one by one. Silly has okay. fantastic vision. Oh, that door was open. Okay, that, that freaked me out for a second. Just a codcaster thing. <laughs> what was my say? S Silly needs to teach me. Well, okay, look at that. Okay, that door's that open. That Are you sure? I <laughs> Silly just using his mind to open and close doors, it looks like. Uh, but again, more kills coming through here for Paris Legion. Four versus two. Got our Rex and Assault both up. This could be a clutch to turn game two on its head. Time is of the essence, though. 34 seconds. Of course, they will have to defuse the bomb. Got to find the players from Paris first. And once again, Chance, it's another dominating round win from Paris Legion. Another dominant round. That the only thing it's done is shook my desire to trust doors to my core. <laughs> I just have no faith. I like. I just, it blew my mind for a second. I understand that's just, all right, we, we can move that, past that. Again, one. that is just a podcaster bug. It's definitely, yeah. Uh, was not happening on silly screen just on our end, but either way, looked looked comical as the game tied up three rounds apiece now. The doors give me nightmares, man. <laughs> Absolute nightmares. I just like I'm trying to sleep and I just hear the sound in my head and I'm wide awake again. Nice. Okay. Don't don't worry about it, Chance. So hopefully that doesn't happen uh, again. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't happen to the players, that's for sure. Uh, but game tied three three. Minnesota Rocker back on the attack board with Alex. He's going to find a freebie on Shock's bottom vent. Meanwhile, Kismet watching the push through from B and he was in this exact same spot a few rounds ago and it seemed pushed straight through and found the kill. Um, will go down though. Minnesota Rocker looking to win this round. Bomb's going to get planted as well. Obviously last time they were able to get down at this site. Things did not pan out but the first blood is absolutely the game changer. Kismet has smokes out. Not sure what that's going to accomplish. No one from Minnesota run through it. Alex, by the way, he's been holding this angle the entire time. So sometimes Alex just picks up two kills inside of Vents and wins the round. Well, <laughs> couldn't find that one. Kismet slid straight through. And Kismet may find Silly as well. Luca shuts down a seam. So Silly left in a pretty important spot here. He's going to have to rotate because this has all of a sudden just become a 2v2. Got our X wins one. And that now forces a two versus one. Luca all by himself. 12 seconds left. Does he just try and stick the defuse? That may be the only play. Is Silly going to check in time? Tags him up. Finds the kill. Minnesota Rocker win the round. And that did get spicy. Just a, a little bit. bit spicy towards the end. Kismet has his headset cranked to the max. He just heard Silly coming all the way around through Traxxer. Just knew he was there earlier. Also, Ben, for the first blood, when Alex killed Shox, did Shox crawl out of vents and pre-fire door where nobody was? Or did I, am I seeing things? You may be right. Maybe I'm seeing things. I don't know. It looked like Shox just started shooting at nothing, and then Alex killed him. Maybe I'm faded. I don't know. I'll go back and check hey, it. You can, Either you, way. Can, you can go back and check it now if you want. Shout out YouTube. That's, I don't know. Okay, well, then don't do that. That's fine. You can go check in the commercial break. We'll, we'll clarify if that was the case or not. But first blood comes in for Paris Legion now. Zed with the nade onto a seam. 
So early advantage here. Parents look to tie things up in the search four to four. And let me try and push forward. Of course, his teammate is on the bomb. His teammate's actually planted the bomb here. Alex, to try and retake, will find a pick onto Kismet. Unfortunately, though, Zed will drop as well for Paris Legion. So number advantage there for Minnesota Rocker. Luka, though, opening it up. Now, Minnesota Rocker have to be concerned about the flank, so they start to push forward just a little bit right into the trap that Paris has set. And again, Luka, they don't have any information on him. They're trying to be forced to make a play, which they simply cannot. Another suffocating round coming out from the Paris Legion. High up this game, too. Four rounds apiece. Plus, if you are just tuning in, it was Minnesota Rocker that took game one, 250 to 150. Azir Cave, hard point. It was a close first rotation and the minnesota rocker blew them out the water this game started off with minnesota rocker in control paris legion claw their way back into it all tied up heading into round number nine minnesota rocker on the attack and are they going to mix things up maybe show a doesn't look like it however alex may be thinking about pushing this or maybe even just holding and waiting to see if anyone from paris wants to get a little overconfident well, he knows no one saw him on the cross, so he's definitely in a solid spot right here. But unfortunately, he's not in that There might be an opening, but that was the trap that was getting set up. But he has to know the vent room is open. And you can see he's electing not to push in. He knows that his team has zero control of that It's area. a cute little strap. You lose full control over Boiler, and that's the problem. Chuck can push straight into you. He can find one. Silly, luckily in a position to trade. But it makes going over towards B so, so difficult. You have no control over the site. It's a scary one to try and push. And it's Paris to try and solidify this round and put himself at map point. Picked apart once again. Got Rex with a nice angle, but Kismet knows about it. Meanwhile, his teammates have killed everyone else in sight. Got Rex. Best of luck. is just getting hunted down now by four players. Now make it three. <laughs> a moment later, and he may find Kismet there. Unfortunately for him, all eyes on his location. Iris Legion put themselves at map point five to four. They lead. Here in game two, here's how that final kill came about. Luca just watching his mitts back in the correct spot. And really, it was a cute little strat there from Minnesota Rocker, but just didn't work at all. Yeah, I mean, if Hasim wins that gunfight and kills the guy that was coming in through Boiler Room, like, then Minnesota Rocker, the strat pays dividends. Unfortunately for them, it's just not the way that gunfight goes. And, well, they lose map control, so one round away. Paris Legion from putting Minnesota Rockers record on this map to 1-5. Nice. Nice. Paris just taking a uh, note out of Minnesota Rockers book. All it is is Minnesota just running straight through and Silly with two. Silly with three. A great start to this round. Goddard Rex will also find one. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to a round 11. That boy said his facts. That was crazy. Uh, he's been rocking an M4 for, uh, for seemingly the entire game. He pulls out the MP5 for a moment and then just runs the Legion over. You talk about a nice little confidence boost to go into that round 11. That's about all you could ask for from Silly. So we'll see what these teams bring to the table. Looks like it's going to be the rocker on offense. And they've shown quite a few different strats. You got the no bomb strat. You got the play for picks. You got the leave the vent room open. <laughs> see what they pull out of the bag this time around. Pushing no one to avoid it. Silly's responsibility is mid map. Someone's going to watch the flank, and they're turtled once again. The problem they have is Shock's pushed all the way past the bomb, but he elects to back off. Doesn't want to give away a free first blood. Still, everyone alive. Minnesota Rocker trying to check as many angles as they possibly can. Is it safe for a team to put bomb down? Well, he's going to elect to do so. Zed, of course, is top crate. Alex jumped straight up. But Rex, a little worried about the flank. Zed is going to have to play so patient here. Look at that minimap. Four players from Paris Legion chance trying to hit the flank. And I think Silly didn't even see one of them. Or maybe he saw one. I don't know how much information he just gave his teammates. Assault obviously knows he's being hunted. Zed with the first blood over top. And now the pinch is in. Paris Legion. They have everything covered. Come out. You are surrounded. Alex is going <laughs> to die as well. You blink and you miss it. Talk about the play call coming out from Paris. Send four Beautiful. on the flank. We don't even care. Beautiful. And they run them And, and I want to give big credit there to Zed for me for Paris Legion. Now... When four of your teammates hit the flank like that, composure is so, so important. Being patient has to time the pinch perfectly. And not only does he time it perfectly, he actually wins the gunfight as well. And you see what that effect has. Alex is left in no man's land. He knows Zed's to his right. 
little did he know everyone else from paris legion was pushing the flank as well a very very bold brave strategy from paris legion but it works out perfectly you remember that time kismet tweeted out how many rounds do you have to lose to a flank to come in before you learn he was tweeting they that at the that. rocker who didn't watch the flank and that's a situation where they had a guy i think it was silly's job to at least check on it i'm almost i'm 99 percent certain he did not see all four he might have only seen one or two because the way the minnesota rocker played that seemed like they had no idea so apparently that's how you beat him you just I, I mean chance to be honest in around 11 do you really expect four players to flank you Probably not, right? Not at all. No, no. I don't expect it, but I have someone whose job is dedicated True. to stare at the flank. There is 18 spots on that map where you can just sit there and watch the cross coming in from train tracks. Boom. Problem solved. You got five players on the map. Leave one guy to do that. Honestly, you're not wrong. Series currently tied at one map apiece. We're going to do a quick commercial break. We're going to look at some dragons. When we return, though, we have some domination <laughs> action in what is an incredibly close series. Local fan of the Dallas M Local fan of the Dallas Empire? Dallas is home to some of the most unique types of cuisine in the country. Why not help support some local restaurants by opening Grubhub and calling in a supply drop? This way, you'll never miss a minute of the Call of Duty League. Texas is the barbecue capital with an incredibly wide range of flavors and preparation methods spanning the state. You'd be remiss to dismiss the rib tips or brisket when in the Lone Star State. Here's all the spots you can get your barbecue fix. Also, every day from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., your favorite local participating restaurants will be offering a special perk to customers on Grubhub, where you can continue to support your local restaurants. You
Minnesota Rock of Paris Legion series tied 1-1. A crazy close search and destroy chance goes to around 11 where Paris Legion, I mean, the, the play they decided to pull out the works there in that last round was, uh, was a brave one. And, you know, something we talked about is, like, the communication from the team as well, right? Mm -hmm. And that play got set up, and it took them maybe 20 seconds to get that organized because they had everyone stacked up at the B site. They were all hanging out, ready just for that normal retake. And then someone made the call, wait a minute, let's send everyone back. So they left Zed on an island by Oof. himself and just trusted that the Rocker weren't going to push past. And it took, what, maybe 15, 20 seconds for them to go around and make the play. And then it just happened so fast, executed perfectly. <laughs> a fantastic way to, to close out a very good uh, search and destroy game two. Of course, the, the series tied one apiece. Heading into the domination chance, are there any numbers or stats which jump out to you? I closed my notebook. I'm trying to remember. Well, I, I know in the series, the two times these teams have matched up, Minnesota has won the domination both okay. times. I'm pretty sure I said at the, the top of the segment that whoever wins the domination, in my opinion, is going to win the entire series. Obviously, going up 2-1, to one, it doesn't hurt to have that extra win in the back pocket. So I, I think that very well might hold true. But it, the map is – whatever it is, it's the one that Paris Legion are 5-1 and one on. Like, at the start of the day, they were 5-0 and oh, undefeated mm -hmm. on the map. I'm pretty sure gun yeah, runner. And then they lost. And we were like, hey, undefeated. They're looking great. <laughs> Chicago was like, I don't care. I don't care at all what their record is. And they took them down. So Minnesota are playing Paris on their favorite domination map. And, of course, I'm going to call it a must win. Okay. M must win from Chance. Of course, you saw our uh, tactical play presented by the U.S. Army there. It was, of course, that round 11 search and destroy play call. Very brave. We, we obviously talked a, a lot about communication. Uh, and you bring that up as well in the search and destroy. And Paris the Legion and, and the way that they are communicating, making sure they are communicating correctly. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I'd love to go to a listening at some point in this domination with Paris Legion, just to really, I guess, deep dive into that theory, Chance. Maybe that is the, the reason that some of these mistakes are happening. It's also risky. Some of the best, <laughs> or maybe the worst, depending on your perspective, listenings of all time have come from the Australians. So <laughs> I don't know what we're going to get. Hopefully it's informative. But if it's not, hopefully it's at least entertaining. I, so we'll I, I think it's uh, it's going to be one of the two. That's for sure. Um, hopefully we get the um, the educational type. And, and maybe yes, not necessarily. That, that's definitely what we're maybe, for. maybe not even necessarily educational in, in terms of... Uh, you know, learning about the game, but just specifically learning about Paris Legion and how some of these mistakes are happening. Because ever since Kismet kind of mentioned it yesterday, a lot of those mistakes seem seem even more highlighted. Chance, it's uh, it's it's pretty strange, pretty strange to see. And again, keep in mind, when I'm making this guess, it's purely from an outside perspective. I'm not there with that team every day. Sometimes a guy just sneaks past, right? Like it might not be a communication thing. There might just be a couple hills or maybe a couple moments in Search and Destroy that they just, in their minds, if they flip differently, then it's going to go great. Like maybe they just think the play calling in Search and Destroy needs to be better. And that's why you see a four-man flank towards the end. So the coaching staff on Paris assuredly is working overtime to make sure that all the guys are on. I will the say that uh, normally at events you... You uh, often sit and listen to teams just uh, through their player comms. So uh, if there's anyone to have a theory that would be correct about this chance, I'd, I, I bet it would be you. Um, so going to a listening at some point with Paris would be uh, fantastic. As we said, though, series currently tied at one map apiece. We thought this was going to be a close one. Uh, and so far, Chance, I, I feel this series hasn't disappointed. So far, so good. Uh, I mean, obviously, the first map wasn't as close as it could have been, but we get the round 11 for that little bit of bounce back. And then, of course, in domination, I think unless it's an extreme sort of situation, normally the match is within 20, 30 points of each right. other. And, of course, these guys going head to head, I think maybe a theme for Paris we've kind of highlighted is inconsistency, but we just Luca or saw Luca put on a show, so I'm expecting him to be able to carry that over towards the domination. Obviously, Silly has been putting up great numbers as well. We saw in the first hard point. And he put up numbers in the S and D as well, so it's just a, a very nice head-to-head -head matchup. It's funny you kind of mentioned it in uh, in the commercial break, just how under the radar that Luca performance went. Fourteen kills overall, a great game two, and you definitely expect to see that momentum carry through into game three, a must-win. We'll have a quick uh, look at tweet from Brian Saint. Of course, it's the Rocker head coach. GM, just know every map we play is close, whether we win or lose, because we want to give the fans a great viewing experience. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Saint. We appreciate that. Doing it for the fans. I respect it. Respect it. That's good luck. Help us out. Anyway, we'll we'll take it, you know? Make it nice and competitive. But uh, a tweet he actually had earlier that I thought was even funnier is him and Reppin, he, like, put a gif of when they go into the team speak, because 
keep in mind, everyone that's watching at home on the YouTube, it's like a minute and a half delay, something like that. Who knows? But there is certainly a delay. So anytime these coaches are now going into the team speak, because obviously they're not there, they don't always know who won. <laughs> Sometimes it's not clear. Sometimes they go into the team speak expecting their team to have won the map, and they come in and their players are super depressed, and they're like, ooh, so <laughs> you got to tell me what happened. I haven't seen it yet. And that means any time that there's a round 11. So this just happened to both the coaches on these teams. They don't know who's going to win until they actually go and join the call physically. So they just have to be like, all right, guys, like, tell me what happened. And the Minnesota Rocker have to break it down and be like, they sent four on the <laughs> flank. We weren't ready for it. We didn't see it. I only saw one cross. And then you have to have that depressing conversation with your coach. Your coach is like, all right, well, uh, don't do that. And fix it before dawn. Let's go. <laughs> and that's all they can say. They're just like, I didn't see heads it. Up. So just don't do right. it again. Just get your heads up going into this game three, Dom. As you mentioned, uh, it is going to be a gun runner. And you kind of said must win here. Did you believe that sentiment true for, for both these two teams? It, essentially, what you're saying is the winner of game three here is going to win the series. That's my best guess. And then when you look at the next two maps after that, St. Petro, Hardpoint, and then Arklov to finish off the series, I think at this point we can just say all of those are toss-ups. They have not played either of those maps an extreme amount on either side of the table. So it's not like we're getting a ton of information. Like, yes, the Rocker played Arklov a little bit sure. earlier, but – God, Rex is going to snipe outer. Oh, boy, that's so helpful, right? So <laughs> you don't have a wealth of information. So you have that confidence map. If you get the map three, you're just feeling great about the series because now you're just expecting, well, I can beat whatever the other team is in one of the next two maps. So I'll stand by that. Yeah, uh, must win map for both okay. teams. So chance predicting the winner of this should go on to win the series. They've had some incredibly close games throughout the day, including, of course, a draw in domination the second time. I guess this one was... More official, if you will. But there's a quick glance at our bracket. Now it's Empire ready and waiting in the semifinal. We'll see uh, Toronto Ultra versus the Florida Mutineers following this game. This to decide that who wants to try and get some revenge against Chicago Huntsman. And one thing is for sure, Chance, uh, those two teams, both Dallas and Chicago, have looked fantastic this weekend so far. And I think that is... I don't know if I would say necessarily the expected matchup for the grand finals, but I think that's certainly the most likely outcome that if you polled people, sure. and I think that's a matchup that a lot of people definitely want to see. Yeah. I don't even know if Dallas wants to see that again because they've been watching their team get beat repeatedly against Chicago, but maybe they want to I, I think they're desperate, desperate to get some revenge. <laughs> Very hungry yes, for they revenge. would love that. I think they'd love nothing more uh, than that to be the grand final, and of course for them to win and defend their own uh, city for the weekend. But uh, I think... To your point, widely expected, that is the grand final. I think a few people may have, all right, well, whatever curveball happens, such as Minnesota Rocker, for example, who have shown that they can beat the big boys before and they can make it uh, far in tournaments. But for them, I, I think that result against the Huntsman earlier in the tournament was a bit of a wake-up call. Maybe they went in a, a little overconfident. It was still an incredibly close game. It was by no means a blowout. Uh, but learning from those big mistakes, such as, you know, losing six rounds in search destroy in a row is going to be imperative for them to really improve and find that form to which we maybe feel confident enough to predict that they might win a tournament. And, and the full sale thing aside from the rocker, again, my like my top level analysis for it is they just got beat. Right. Sure. It's not that they uh, outside of the search in, in the respawns, at least they didn't make a crazy amount of mistakes. It's just the players on the other side of the board just had very good games. RC's threw up like a 1.6 KD, and he's doing that while winning by 15 points in the hard point and squeaking by in the domination with like a 10-point victory. Right. So you just have to make sure RC's, you know, doesn't drop a 1.6 on you. Slow him down <laughs> a little bit, and you'll be and right And I'm actually kind of curious to see exactly what the map ban and pick process is going to look like tomorrow, regardless of who actually wins this series going up against Huntsman, because we saw uh, St. Petro search and destroy twice and we saw envoy twice just go off i mean for me that's almost becoming an insta ban just just against envoy forget about the huntsman in general if i see envoy on the other team doesn't matter who he's playing for i'm considering banning that map chance and this is an interesting thing about the pick and bans as well because like just to keep on touching on chicago at the very least we haven't watched them play gunrunner domination the entire year until yesterday now they've only like they've played it twice in a row mm -hmm. so maybe they've been working on the new map and this is the thing they're pulling out of their back pocket the team's aren't expecting them to even want to play the map. Turns out that's what they've been grinding and working the hardest on to improve. And even a team like Minnesota still consistently wants to play Gunrunner S&D. They are now 1-5 in five on that map. Maybe tomorrow, if they're still playing, we'll mix up the bag a little bit. Maybe they'll ban that out of their own pocket and make sure that they can try to get maybe some more petrol. Yeah, an interesting board. stat to see a, a team consistently play a map when they're having uh, such little success or lack of success. Curious to see if that is actually correct. 
Uh, but either way, um, as things stand, we're waiting for game number three to get underway. You can see our players waiting as well as seem super excited to get game three underway. It's going to be Gunrunner Domination. And as Chance said a few moments ago, I think the expectation really here is whoever takes game three more than likely will take the series as the game loading up now. Predictions, Chance? I don't often do this much anymore, but if you had to, who, who are you going? Who takes the series? Uh, I mean, again, when you just look at that head-to-head -head map count, you have a team in Paris Legion that came into the day undefeated 5-0 and on this map. Obviously, they do fall. They fell to the Huntsman. What are you going to do? Huntsman just beat everybody at this point, it seems. Again, a, a great record on their side. And then on the flip side, I think it was 1-2 for the Minnesota Rocker. So based on that, I'm picking the Rocker, actually, Ben. I'm throwing a curveball. <laughs> Definitely going Rocker. Rocker are just going to come out and smash it. Let's okay, go. Okay, not what I expected to hear <laughs> throughout all of that. Uh, but game number three is officially underway on Domination. And we kick things off on board with the Minnesota Rocker. And, of course, got our Rex. He not going to be capped just yet. You can see so many of those arrows ready and waiting for the pushes to come through. Alex is going to be the patient one now. Decides to try and push forward after finding a pick. Unfortunately, unsuccessful for him. He still neutral. Alex probably just hit the slide button about 87 times. Couldn't get it to work. So he's going to fall because the <laughs> movement did not help out for him. And of course, Smoke being out. Got her actually not feel obligated to try to fly through. But Assault, as soon as it clears, takes down Zed and B still gets the cap. Patience from Kismet now decides to push, knowing he had a team absolute. And still alive though, defending B with his life through the course opposite. Tags him up, nicely done. Now can Paris capture the B point? I don't think so just yet. One more challenge is gonna come through. A seam to save the day. He does get capped up, but for how long can Paris even hold it? Minnesota Rocker looking to break through. Pretty long, potentially, oh, no. if you just go and kill everybody, as Kismet's able to pick up two, and by the time he falls by the hands of his teammates, well, there were more players nearby. So it looks like that team kill might actually be punishing unless these nades connect, which, well, of course, as you say, they do. There's a couple of trophies coming through, but Paris Legion with a three-point advantage. B still neutral. We talked a lot throughout today about Paris Legion and their communication and the questions we have. But it seems like a perfect time to send it to an Astro Gaming listening with Paris Legion. Yo, quick, come, come to your yeah. course. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna be a. Hey, pitch your water, water, water. What? Pitch you. I like it, I like it. Like I just can't see it. Hey, you're heading, you're heading, you're heading. Invent, 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 dead. Two, two, P3, I think. Okay, maybe just get. Water, 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 Okay, guys. Uh, three, yeah, got me in the back. Yes, silly. Silly. Bro, this is fucking loud. I know, I know. Alright, we're gonna try to just try to play. Skinny, 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 yeah, yeah, he's in, uh, he's in the whole side, top side, he's going back to the bathroom, just can't get one, I can't see, I can't see, yeah, one top side, guys, one venom, one venom, flash, 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 Alex was absolute, a sim, silly crate, silly crate, trying to get you, I can't move, one's vent, one's vent, in office, in office, he's out skinny, he's out skinny, he's green, he's green, As the games have been all day, another incredibly close series on our hands and close map at that 52-46. The lead Minnesota Rocker currently have over Paris Legion here in Gunrunner Domination. And Chance, uh, obviously we had a chance to, to listen to Paris Legion. Anything uh, to note from, uh, from the comms there? Uh, honestly, no complaints. They were pretty much just calling out exactly what was happening on their screens as they saw it. I was really hoping for the situation of if they ever left the, the vaccine spawn open and Minnesota spawn behind them, what was going to happen, but never occurred. Uh, the one thing I did appreciate is that there was one moment where Vent was open. They had to worry about the flank. Someone was very quick to say, hey, watch Vent, watch Vent. My guy might be able to get behind us. 
the exact situation occurred and they took him down. So they're aware of the holes on the map. They plug him as quickly as they can. Sometimes, though, gunfights just don't go your way. Very true. Being concise communication is going to sort of rock in now with a 15 point lead. And also looking to put pressure everywhere on the map. Lucroft spawn. You need to try and track over towards C. Minnesota don't want to hang around, though. It's a decap and run, or is it? There was Silly hiding in the smoke. The nade comes through from Assault. That's a double kill. Minnesota rocking now, earning a big, big chunk of time and chunk of points. There's still no flag capped for Paris Legion. This lead starting to get a little sizable now, Chen. And this is the best time to kind of bump those numbers up just a little bit. You can see the Rocker pouring a ton of pressure over on the C flag. They are spawning up towards A. Actually, no, they're not. They just spawned right on top of the C flag, right next to the Paris Legion. So makes it very easy to take them down and kill them. And, well, they'll find themselves after the first half up by 30 points, which is a, a very comfortable. I mean, we come out of the listening. It was a three-point game. We finished the first side. And when we look at the difference, there's two points, the advantage. It just shows you, Chance, how quickly a lead can spiral out of control here in Domination this year. And just how quickly all that pressure you pour while you're holding the A flag over towards C can just work in your favor because at times you spawn closer to the enemy's flag than they do. Of course, with that backwater tower spawn coming in. But either way, Bears Legion have dug themselves in a hole. They are very comfortable on this map, but now the pressure is on. And Shocks feeling the servers right now. Two and 12. It's almost like it's playing for Australia. Not, uh, not having a lot of success. Luker as well can join in there at 16, 13. Of course, nowhere near as bad, but we kind of joked earlier on it was Luker as well, was it not? When we were talking about single digit performances and uh, respawn specifically. Well, both of those two in desperate need of stepping things up. On the other side for Minnesota, Rocker. Things looking pretty good for Silly, pretty good for Assault, but overall, everyone pulling their way. Yeah, Seam especially right there, able to pick up two. I'm going to backtrack for a second just say, Doors, still give me nightmares. <laughs> Don't trust those at all. But either way, whether you trust them or not, Rocker, happy to get all the kills. They're going to be able to secure this point. Being silly, might have an important gunfight to win, at least just to stay alive for a little bit so his teammates can help him out. And, well, pressure's on God Rex, so he falls as well. So Paris Legion, nice little response. They should be able to secure the B flag. Now it's the stop to it. Four players right in front of him. The answer there is no. Shop shuts him down. So Paris Legion stabilized. Two flags to one. But unfortunately for them, Otto Rex is already neutral to C and he stayed alive. Now, that's going to put pressure on Paris Legion. Do they want to push forward? Do they want to try and put pressure on A? Well, when you're down by 30 points, you definitely have in the back of your mind. At some point, we might need a triple cap. But with this much time on the clock, we are nowhere near that point. So they just need to play their best game and just take what opportunities they have when they get there. They don't have to force oh, I want to point out, got our Rex just making a, a great play. Neutral C when we called it out. He's gone on to stay alive, find two kills. Still, Paris Legion off spawn have not been able to cap. And I believe got our Rex is also going to shut down one more as well. Got our Rex is single-handedly shut down down Paris Legion's points income to zero. Just he neutraled their home hill and just roamed around and he's still alive, still finding kills. This, a great individual play. It's relieving so much pressure elsewhere. His teammates can say, all right, well, we'll just keep focusing. B, you keep doing you. It's only four kills. It's only a four streak, but the effect this has had on the score is massive. Is he still alive? There are six in a row for God Rex. And now he says, well, screw it. May as well cap the hill. And as soon as he decides to, Shock shuts him down. All that work just to keep that score line staying and just the, the stagnant pace where it is. You got a 30 point lead. You don't need to increase it anymore. You can just hang out and look at how annoying they're consistently being. The Rocker always, when they're holding that A flag, flooding over towards C, making sure you keep a little bit of pressure over to the B side. Now they're actually just flipping down ahead. They've gone to C so much while that's being capped. They're just sending the full flood back over towards the B And it becomes flag. a rotation game. When you have about a 30, 35 point lead with three minutes to go, you can make those plays just consistent pressure consistently forcing your opposition to track back play for their own home hill there's nothing more annoying in domination than when you think you're about to lock in two flags and all of a sudden your home's being decapped uh, and even so if you're minnesota rocky you don't necessarily even need a two to one flag advantage you just need to make sure at base level you, you know both of you have one flag keep the other neutral and that's exactly what god rx did so so well chance and now the Rocker are back. They have control of B, so anyone that's coming off spawn, they've just been pouring the pressure over towards the C flag. That is Silly's job right now, who's able to pick up two, and it's just 
so annoying to deal with. Like, you have to worry about the C flag for a minute and a half. As soon as you lock that down, all of a sudden, all five players on the rock are now towards B. Then as soon as they get that, now you got Silly in the back of your spawn just going for these spawn kills. And it is so incredibly annoying to deal with. And Silly now just trying to run it up, going on a tear, looking for the quad feed. Then there's three, not going to find four. Fortunately for him, he will drop. Trip cap is in. Ladies and gents, game three is done and dusted. Chance he went against numbers, but your prediction was so correct. Has got our X finds too. A team looking to try and put the final nail in the coffin and go for another trip cap. There's still a minute to go, but the game is, to be honest, it's been over for quite some time. A quick glance at your stats. Shock still struggling. Eight and twenty-three. Luca was able to at least find double digits, but he's double negative. Twelve and twenty-four. Kismet. Not really had a great game either, 16 and 23. Denz is positive, but barely at 16 and 14. Zed also a slow game at 16 and 18. And I'm assuming you remember the conversation where I was saying, anytime it's a close game, the coaches have to join the call and they have no idea who won the oh, game. Oh, yeah, they know this. Not team. the case here. Not the case at all. They figured it out about two and a half, three minutes ago. So now the entire job of the Paris Legion coaching staff is go in and just try to untilt your players. Get them prepared for map four. Just try to let them flush this as quickly as possible and get it out of your memory. Getting beat by 70 points of domination, not fun and not easy to come back from. Definitely not fun. This uh, one of the bigger blowouts I think we'll see all year. And again, it was very strange to see how games can just spiral out of control. We went to a listening. We were impressed with what we heard. It was a three-point advantage. Minnesota Rocker held. And the game finishes 176-122. Complete blowout of a series, or uh, of a map, I should say. And I mean, when you think big picture and you think series, looking very good now if you're a Minnesota fan. Looking very good. And again, these teams have matched up against each other twice. Minnesota 2-0 against the Paris counterpart. The statement has been true for Paris. Anyone that's above them in the leaderboards, they have lost to anyone beneath them. They have taken down one map away, and that stays true. But of course, Paris have also been an incredibly resilient team so far this year. So it's definitely not over until it's Big over. Big credit there to Silly. 30-19, his stat line, the exact same score. As uh, God Rx, who finished 29 and 15. So those two pitting up big, big numbers. Alex really didn't have much to do there with a relatively slow game from him at 13 and 14. But at the end of the day, they absolutely blew Paris Legion out the water. That's what I was kind of saying before the series, right? Like, obviously, God Rx has been getting a ton of credit. Well deserved. I'm not saying he doesn't. But the, as if, like, a cohesive unit, everyone has been on point for the Rocker. Because this has been silly. Just yeah. having a fantastic series. He pulled out, what, the, the M4 on his ear cave? Had an absolute field day with it. Was caping up with everybody who's been rocking an M4 since day one. He looked like a natural. Now he comes in the S&D. Do you think he's having a, a little bit of, of slow performance? Boom, pulls out an MP5, gets four kills in a round in a matter of 20 seconds. Now he goes to the domination, drops 30, leading the lobby in slang, having a hell of a I think that's game. what makes Minnesota Rocker such a well-rounded team, though, is they all have that pop-off potential, right? Whether it's in search or respawn, it doesn't matter. Uh, all of those players can go on streaks. We've seen Assault do it so many times. I've seen Alex, Philly, and, of course, God RX. Um, and it just requires, you know, a few moments like that chance, and all of a sudden the game is blown completely out the water. And just because of what I've seen on Gunrunner S&D from the Rocker, I'm going to change my analysis and search them. If God Rx is sniping, that's a map they're going to have a lot of success on. If he's not, oh dear, it's not going to go well. And I'm definitely not saying that's all on him, but we've seen them on Piccadilly. They look fantastic. We watched them on Arclav earlier today. Look pretty damn good with a sniper as well. And, of course, we've seen them put in work on St. Petrograd every now and again as well, so long as, you know, they watch yeah. the flank. As long as he has a sniper in his hands in search, he seems to do pretty wonderful things. I mean, even sometimes when he puts it away, Still has uh, a fair amount of success, but as things stand, it is Minnesota Rocker 2-1 up now in this series, but there is still more Call of Duty action to come. Uh, one more game on the day. Toronto Ultra versus Florida Mutineers will follow this. Uh, as for the rest of the results, I mean, you can see how the day has shaped out for uh, Chicago Huntsman and Dallas Empire. It was a one-and-done sort of day, a 3-1 victory and a 3-2 victory. Of course, uh, Seattle Surge struggling as our los angeles gorillas uh still the struggles at the bottom of the leaderboards continuing uh we actually talked about this at the very very beginning uh, of yesterday chance uh, seattle surge right and what they really needed to turn things around still those struggles continuing 
I mean, again, that team's primary focus, I'm assuming it was, but it didn't matter in the slightest. It has to be like search and destroy, right? They were terrible before. I think now the record is like 3-12 and 12 or something absurd. Like, I think of any game mode in the negative direction, they are by far the worst team in any pure game mode than anyone else. It, it has to be, unless, like, the Gorillas have a really bad hard point record or something like that, but it's just – you can't be one like bad at that. Like if you're going to be bad at anything, just be bad at domination because you only have to play it once, right? But you pick <laughs> right. potentially the most important one or if you go to the game fives, which they're like one in three or one in four and now that your team is just going to suffer. Like they've had a month and a half to grind, search, and destroy every single day. And I don't know if they did or not, but obviously it hasn't paid off. I mean, if they did, it's definitely not worked. That's for sure. But uh Again, in regards to this game, Minnesota Rocket currently with the advantage 2-1 to one over Paris Legion. We'll be right back after this quick break with Game 4 Hardpoint. Dragons. Local fan of the Dallas Empire? Dallas is home to some of the most unique types of cuisine in the country. Why not help support some local restaurants by opening Grub? Local fan of the Dallas Empire? Dallas is home to some of the most unique types of cuisine in the country. Why not help support some local restaurants by opening Grubhub and calling in a supply drop? This way, you'll never miss a minute of the Call of Duty League. Texas is the barbecue capital with an incredibly wide range of flavors and preparation methods spanning the state. You'd be remiss to dismiss the rib tips or brisket when in the Lone Star State. Here's all the spots you can get your barbecue fix. Also, every day from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., your favorite local participating restaurants will be offering a special perk to customers on Grubhub, where you can continue to support your local restaurants. You can even get $10 off your order of $30 or more. If barbecue isn't doing it for you, why not get some Tex-Mex? Texas shares a massive border with Mexico, and with the blending of cultures, Tex-Mex food was born. These fusion dishes are characterized by their introduction of American ingredients into classic Mexican dishes munch on some delicious chips and queso to celebrate Tejano culture. And no fear, Grubhub also released a new feature for contact-free delivery, where you can instruct the delivery drivers to leave the bag at the door, notifying via text or doorbell upon arrival. Once you're done feasting on barbecue or Tex-Mex, it's time for dessert. Dallas is home to some of the best pecan pie around. It's such a staple in Texas that it was named their official state pie. If it's so good the government recognizes it, you should probably open up Grubhub and try it out. Here's where you can make that happen. Also, with all Grubhub orders, you can round up your change and will go to benefit local restaurants and drivers impacted by COVID-19. Never miss a minute of the tournament action by ordering ahead and having your food delivered by Grubhub. Help out your community while calling in a supply drop. Shout out Grubhub, keeping us fed throughout quarantine. Much appreciated all the hard work uh, they are doing. 
really keeping uh, the nation fed if you will throughout a very very tough troublesome time but back to the game chance uh, we were waiting game number four to begin i believe the lobby is just getting set up once again and as things stand it is advantage minnesota rocker two to one uh, and Chetsy, you kind of said whoever wins game number three you think takes the series after how convincing that was i'm gonna have to agree with you I mean, again, like you just have a situation where we know the Rocker obviously can take Paris down on quite a few maps. Now they have to win one of the next two. You got Arklav, S&D, if he goes to game five, and a Petro hard point for the upcoming one. And I'm not saying outright I think they'll win the hard point because obviously Paris, very resilient team. We saw them earlier play. Luka had a fantastic game on Petro. Again, comfortable with the M4, and they look great. But at the same time, Again, the Rocker can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. So very confident right now. If you're a Minnesota fan, you should be. Yes. And frankly, I just am now thinking about how much of an interesting relationship they have with Dorf. <laughs> yeah, there's been a, a few uh, weird ones, a few weird moments, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, yeah, because like, if you think about the, the moment where Silly I, it was playing against the Surge, right, where they like closed the door and then they had like all the great teamwork and his, or Alex came up behind him and like killed two and all that. And it was hilarious. He closed the door behind him. Doors have been coming at Minnesota Rocker with just revenge in their mind of players just teleporting through, breaking them open. Sometimes they're there or they're not. I have no idea what the players are seeing, but it seems like the doors have come back for revenge. Yeah, potentially. Of course, it's going to be uh, our point St. Petro up next as our game four chance. And I mean, is there any likelihood in your mind that this forces to a game five or a Minnesota Rocker just going to close it out here in four? No, absolutely. It's a very strong likelihood. Again, I think the untilt factor coming in right now uh, for the Paris Legion is definitely going to be at play of how well or how quickly can they sort of unwind and refocus and make sure they focus on Petrograd and watch what happened in the domination out of your mind. So that gives an extra edge, in my opinion, to the rocker who must be feeling very comfortable right now after the performance they just had. But you take the 65-35 I threw at you earlier, you take that to maybe an 80-20, but still 20%. It's a big number. It's uh, sizable, sizable in Paris Legion. No strangers to some game fives as well. Uh, as we wait for game number four to get underway, as I mentioned, it is going to be a St. Petrograd hard point. Uh, I, I guess chance a bigger picture, or I, I guess more direct question, uh, in terms of individual players, specifically on Paris Legion, that you think need to step up to the plate here to try and force that game five. Well, I mean, when you say step up, in my mind, I'm looking for the bounce back from shocks, but I kind of just expect that to happen. I expect him mm -hmm. to just be more comfortable and have a respectable, if not just outright great performance. But Luca is still going to be the guy I key in on. We saw him do very, very well at the start of the Azir Cave hardpoint. It eventually sort of fell off. It's a map where when he has success, the team looks great. Where he starts to fall off, things do not pan out. So Luca's the guy I have my yeah, eyes on. Yeah, he uh, definitely is a, he's kind of an X factor. If, if you are, I know we have that discussion quite often about what the true definition of an X factor is. Uh, but really, when he has those good performances, you, you never you never really know. Paris Legion can turn up to a, a whole different level. Where uh, where do you lean on that debate? It's like, is the X factor to you the guy that can take over a game at any moment or the guy that you don't know if you're going to get greatness or just not a good performance and will win or that. lose you the game? In that I regard? take the latter. That's what you yes. go with? That's what I think it is as well. But a lot of people have X Factor as the guy that just outright win. Like the Envoy would be that type of X Factor. Sometimes he just wins you game, but always he's going to be good. And he doesn't lose you game sort of thing. But I'm a yeah. It's the win or lose guy. Yeah, I, I think it's the, the inconsistencies that come through. That a player that can quite literally win or lose you a map. I mean, that is uh, it's more of an X Factor. But we start game number four underway. And we're on board with a scene from the Minnesota Rocker. Already he'll find one. And it's Paris Legion trying to fight for the early time. Trying to fight for the early time. They're going to get quite a bit of it because yes, the seam has top control or does he? Player just going to come flying through and you're used to a seam being the speed demon. Well, Zed replies in kind, but of course, while Zed is doing that, the Rocker have managed to break into the hill. And again, keep your eyes on that minimap for that spawn over on the furthest right. On that mini map, a good spawn for P2. So far, Minnesota Rocker trying to hold it, but number seven pushes through. That's going to be Kismet for Paris Legion, and the orange arrows flooding over towards that new hill. And now it's just a mad dash for the Rocker to get on back. You, you think Kismet would start playing for spawns, but he goes on the full wrap and actually pushes the hill. So his teammate Shocks, that was going for spawns, had to fight three members of the Rocker by himself. Not an easy task. He's going to fall. So potentially an opportunity wasted. You, you trade away. You make sure you get eight seconds of scrap, but you do not get the spawn. Next. 
yet. Little advantage Minnesota Rocket in that regard as New Hill pops. And Minnesota, of course, with the advantage. 33 to 17, the current score. A quick glance at your stats. Lucas struggling one and four off the rip. Uh, isn't it also still just the one for only two deaths though uh, seem not having any trouble whatsoever four and one stop for him currently on a three streak unfortunately will fall and, and think about the kind of a player seem as well sometimes he'll trust his teammates he'll rotate 40 seconds in advance and trust his teammates to fight at the hill and instead we saw Paris that made the decision to let just one guy again fight three members of the rocker on rotation does not pan out and look at what is happening on this hill a bloodbath in favor of the rocker still Two players in and around the hill. Alex is there for the trades. He cleans up that kill instantaneously, and the lead has skyrocketed in Minnesota. Uh, and this State. is where Paris Legion have to make sure they don't let this game get completely out of control. Locking in a, a good favorable spawn early here for the third hill is going to be so, so important. Just bring themselves back into this game. A full 60 would only put them three points behind Minnesota Rocker. So it's definitely possible, but you've got to slow down. God, our Rex currently six and one, seven and one. As he finds Luca there, finally he will fall. Instead, of course, the back of the map waiting for the Minnesota Rocker push to come. And this is the kind of hill that can set the rocker up, essentially. If they're able to break through and get maybe only 10 or 15 seconds is all they're really going to want. But looks like Paris are not going to let them get it. They are completely turning up for the moment. And you can already see Kismet starting to push up. He wants to get as far as possible. That way his teammates stop spawning in the back. And well, he's find himself some kills. It's flying straight through. He isn't slowing down. He finds Assault almost. Uh, Alex as well. But Paris Legion done so well on this hill. But they need to make sure... They pick up all of the scrap time as well, pouring their way back into this game. It is a nice little bounce back. You don't quite tie the game up, but you get it nice and close. So just sort of that seesaw effect. The team that wins P2, very tough to go over and win P3. And Paris have a very strong hold on the hill. Unfortunately for them, obviously, now you got to take a hike. You have to go <laughs> so far across yeah. the map, and you have to get past Alex first, which Alex takes down three before he gets dropped. And again, 10 seconds have gone by on this hill, and still the Paris members very far yeah. away. It's, uh, obviously the bounce back. You can uh, afford to do when you rotate early and you get good control and your players push out and take a ton of map control. You almost respond to full 60 with a full 60 straight back at him. And as Minnesota Rocker looking to try and do 30 seconds left on full haul. Got our Rex looking at the front floor. Zed may fall if he's not too careful. Rex will back away, but you can already see Minnesota is thinking about the new hill already. And it's just the funnel effect as well. Everyone just being forced in through that door, which once you get past, Pick your corner, and just good luck. Eventually, they're able to get through as Kismet actually goes big and takes down two, but it is not easy to pull that off. Someone has to come up and make the big play. Kismet delivers, but now look at all of his teammates falling one by one. Crocker trade away that final 10 seconds to get that early rotation. So 30-point lead, expect them to bump it up yeah, some well, Don't take that. 123-87. Harris Legion looking to try and push in and break this early setup, but Alex is... Back at it again, as is the seam, a double for him. Water side, the lead just starting to grow and grow. 15 seconds gone on this hill. It seems still scurrying around, looking to try and find some more action. There's another freebie. It's Kismet wasn't even looking at him. Hill is contested, but it seems, again, so focused on spawn control. Absolutely love to see that from him. Yeah, and Shocks right now is still feeling it as well. Obviously didn't have the best game on domination. That seems to be continuing. He is not going to be a happy man at the moment. But again, you have to bounce back. Your team is absolutely still in it. A three-point margin isn't fun, but it's still not extreme. Paris, again, got to be resilient. They do. As the final few seconds will go their way. But again, the important thing to note is the spawn control. Paris Legion will have to implement here on this next few rotations. We're going to our second overall rotation in the game. And for now, at least, it is Minnesota Rocker on the early time of the first hill. But Paris with the good spawn control as they look to try and break through. Unfortunately, Kismet not going to be able to clean up that kill onto Alex. Shox is there to trade, but he's all by himself. And something we talked about earlier on this hill was you had moments where players could go and play for spawns on the side of Paris Legion. They don't when they should have. And now you have Silly, who he is again trusting his teammates. 45 seconds were left on the clock when he spawned up. He is trusting his teammates in the hill, and he is now sat on the far right side of the map just trying to make that sneaky play. And he's got a gunfight in front of him, wins it. Unfortunately for him, I was about to say, he's going to have to win about seven more to actually break through on the spawns. But that's the sort of game plan that the Rock could bring to the table. They are happy to try to go for those sneaky plays constantly. just want to bring up a, a stat there on your uh, scoreboard got our x 14 and 8 minute 47 
total time. Alex, 16 and 17, or 16 and 11, sorry, a minute 20 total time. Assault, 16 and 11, a minute 15. You can see just the work those three putting in. A big, big shift for the Minnesota Rocker. However, it is Paris Legion picking up a lot of time here. And when you look at that mini map, you can see how far Minnesota Rocker were pushing in and potentially having a break with 40 seconds left. Zed going to put some shots down. This is a good defense and a good potential comeback here for Paris Legion. And Zed has been playing so smart really the entire day, really the entire year again, just wasting all of that time, forcing Minnesota to come and hunt him down and makes his teammates job that much easier. Minnesota, though, they actually have bodies in the hill, and I think through the power of the smoke are able to get through and win a couple of gunfights, but Paris are very quick on the return. 15 seconds of scrap, though. Minnesota is very privy to fight for it, and you talk about a back-and-forth little moment, and all of that effort that Minnesota just threw that way, well, Paris, again, they won B3 early. They're going to be there first yep. again. And I want to see an, another good hold here, but more importantly, it, it is something that you often refer to whenever we see this game is you don't want to hold that back spawn for long, right? Ideally, you want it early for the first 10, 15 seconds, but you want to force the other team back there to make that rotation of pool hold that much easier. That's where Paris struggled in our first rotation of hills. And if they can somehow track Minnesota at the back of the map, they will be able to come back into this game. And this might be a big moment for Shox as well. Obviously not had the best of games, but if he can start to get hot right here, right in this moment, you can make do with everything you turn around. <laughs> Able to find a second, and his teammate is there for the cleanup with the hip fire. And now just living inside the smoke, trying to stay alive. Miz, if you're Paris Legion, you want to push straight through. The a bigger problem, however, is silly inside the hill. A scene there for the trades. Minnesota Rocker break inside as well. It's still problematic for paris legion spawning at the back side of the map minnesota rocker have the rotation as well to pull hole honestly chance this might be gg yeah this is a situation where the paris legion ordinarily would be happy to trade away those final 15 seconds if they can win that rotation it's not that type of hill you start getting spawned in the back like that that close spawn just bites you in the butt and you just get spawn trapped and now they got 15 seconds to try to contest and just look how far away every single player is. It would take a miracle for them to get and through. Again, Minnesota Rucker is more than happy to push out, take those fights to Paris Legion. That should be that. Minnesota Rucker take it three to one. The overall series, they will stay alive after falling down into the loser's bracket early. A fantastic series from them. And I will say, I'm sure the Paris Legion feel like the COD gods were against them in that series, and that might very well be the case. But at the end of the day, Minnesota, they get to move on. They are now 3-0 against the Paris Legion on the year. And, well, now they're a team looking for revenge. They're feeling it. They want to go face off against Chicago, potentially in the grand finals, <laughs> and make up for the 3-0 they took yeah, earlier. Yeah, definitely looking for that revenge and definitely looking to see them in a grand final once again. I believe uh, between them and Potential revenge is, of course, Dallas Empire. No, uh, no weak squad, that's for sure, gents. As the the final score again of Game Four, two fifty one sixty seven. A great performance from Minnesota Rocker, staying alive here for the Dallas home series. But still, uh, of course, action to come after this. I believe it's going to be Maven and Merck calling all of the action for the final game of the night. Overall, though, chance I think it's fair to say it's been a, a great day of Call of Duty. Been a pretty good day, and if Maven and Merc maybe took some of our powers of like that game five magic, maybe they can have another tie. <laughs> throw it at them, give them like throw it at the brick wall. They had what a 250, yeah. 249 game in the hard point. They had a tie in the domination. Let it happen again. Give them some of that good series juice that well we used to have at the very sure, yeah. I'm sure Maven would love another uh, domination tie. It's definitely on the top of his to do list for uh, the ending <laughs> of today. But that's gonna be everything for uh, myself and Chance, I believe, for now. But still to come, more games after this.